let me show you how to create this step-by-step -step animation in After Effects. We're going to start off with creating a new solid right here. It can be black, doesn't matter. And let's look for the four color gradient effect. Let's just set color number four to pretty much the same, maybe a little bit darker. And now let's change the color 4.2 to black or very dark gray. And the same goes for the opposite side right here. This is color number three. And let's change it to black. Next up, we're going to create a subtle movement for the gradient. Let's enable keyframing for point number one and point number four, these points right here. And towards the beginning of the animation, so right here, we're going to set it out somewhere towards the corner. Okay, bam. And then somewhere around at the end, right here, we're just going to bring it back. Same goes for this point here. Okay, if I play this back, you're going to notice very subtle movement. Now I'm going to create one more black solid. And this one is just going to function as the layer beneath this one. Just so that we can adjust the opacity over here. So that the purple color isn't so strong. Because that's a little bit too much. Now I'm just going to pre-compose these black solids. And this is just going to function as our background layer. Additionally, we just can apply some Gaussian blur over here. Like 50 or 100. And I'm also going to add a little bit of noise over here. Like... 6%. I'd like the purple to be a little bit of a more bluish. I'm just going to adjust it with lumetri color and just going to bring down the temperature by a couple. Bam. That's it for the background. Now let's move on to creating the pathway. I'm going to start off with this sort of thin line layer, something like this. And ideally, let me just transform this into a 3D layer just to show what I'm doing. If I zoom out, you can see that it ends here and here. I don't want that because we want it to be sort of unlimited, let's say. So let's just go to transform. Let's unlink the scale factor and let's make it super tall. That way, this is a never ending story. And also, if you want it to be a little bit thicker, we can just increase this scale factor as well on the left. That's a little bit too thick, but something like this, I think, is going to do the job. Okay. Now we're going to move on to creating the circles. So, three circles for each step step one, step two, and step three. So, let's just use the ellipse tool right here. Let's create the step over here. So the size depends on your preference. Something like this. Maybe a little bit bigger. I'm going to transform this ellipse into a 3D layer as well. But first, I'm just going to reset the camera parameters by adding a new camera. Okay. And now if I turn this into a 3D layer, we can see that I can adjust this and position it somewhere around here. Now I can see that the line is a little bit too thick, actually. So let's just switch it to 110, something like that. Make sure that it is centered. Now we're going to duplicate this circle. This is the first one. Let's disable the camera layer for now. That way we have a different perspective now. Let's bring it up somewhere around here just so that we can see it. And then the next one is going to be, let's just duplicate this one. That's going to be easier. Okay. Let's try to keep a similar distance between each and every one of them. I think this looks good. Now we can enable the camera. So this is step number two. Let's go to step number one. Okay. I know that you might not understand what step number one, two, three means for now, but bear with me. And now we're going to add a sort of direction triangle thingy. Take a look at this. I found it on uxwing.com. I'm just going to import it into the folder and I'm going to import it into the project. Now, before we maneuver it around and change the position, I'm going to change its color and add a little bit of shadow. So I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go to layer styles and go to gradient overlay. And first of all, let's adjust the angle. So let's set it to zero degrees. That way it's going to be left versus right. And let's edit the colors right here. So on the left, I want it to be like a bright version of purples. And then on the right, I want it to be pinkish, very bright pink, something like this. And I'm also going to add a shadow, but first I just want to see how it's going to look like on the white layer. So let's transform this into a 3D object as well. Now you can see that it disappeared because it's somewhere above. Let's just adjust the position or if you just hit P on your keyboard and bam. Okay. Now let's scale this down a little bit. So S for scale and let's reposition it. It's still a little bit too big and zoom in with the scroll right here. Great. Now let's just add that shadow I mentioned earlier. Go to layer styles and drop shadow. And let's adjust the shadow because I think this is a little bit too strong. So we can adjust the size. Let's maybe decrease the opacity a little bit. Something like this. In case you want to change the color of this, you can still go to gradient overlay. You can edit the gradient. And I know let's make it a little bit more bluish, I guess. Okay. Before we animate this, let's just move on to the text. So I'm just going to create a new text layer somewhere around here. 
Of course, once we change it into a 3D object, it's going to reposition. But first, let's just enter in the text. So step number one, let's just reposition it. Let's put it right around here. I think that looks good. Ideally, I'm looking for a fade in animation, which I think is going to look really cool. So let's just go to text and hit this animate little button here and then go to opacity. Now under animator range selector one here, set the opacity to zero, expand the range selector one, enable keyframe for offset and set it to minus 100 at the beginning right here, move out a little bit and set it to positive 100. Now let's go to advanced. Let's set the shape to ramp up and then let's set ease high to 50. Same goes for ease low. Nice. Next thing I'd like to see here is I like to have a glow effect behind this. Just duplicate this. And this is a quick method. You could also use the deep glow plugin, but let's just go for a more simplistic version. Let's just add a Gaussian blur and blur it out significantly, like a hundred, something like this. I noticed that once you blur it out too much, it sort of doesn't fit in the area. So what you can do in that situation is you could duplicate this, pre-compose the text layer that's below, now do Gaussian Blur, and if you blur it out, it sort of doesn't have a limit to it. Okay, and that way, this looks good. I'm going to duplicate the text that says step number one, just so that we can use it later on. I'm going to disable it and block it for now. And let's just pre-compose the layer with the text. Make sure that the text that we created is transformed into a 3D layer. Now it's somewhere over there. Let's just hit position for P. Let's bring it down somewhere around here. So before we do the camera movements, I also want to animate this dude over here. So let's select that object. Let's go to transform or you can just hit P for position. And at the beginning, right at the beginning right here, goal we want to achieve, if that makes sense. Just take a look. If I play this back, well, this is very rough. Now I'm just going to make these keyframes a little bit smoother by hitting F9. I'm also going to enable motion blur for this. Bam. Let's play this back. Nice, but still, you can play around with this by editing the speed graph over here. And you can, for example, create this sort of hill shape. This is going to adjust the velocity in time. Nice. Okay. So now let's move on to adding the camera movement. I'm going to start off with creating a slightly different perspective over here, something like this. Let's zoom in slightly. I'm just going to create a very strong rotation to the side. And let's enable keyframing at this moment. Let's bring it a little bit lower. However, at the beginning, I want this animation to start in a way where we're scrolling down, sort of. This is going to make sense in a second. Let me just show you what I mean. Okay. Select it. Hit F9 in order to make it smoother. Now let me play this back. Nice. You can delay this in time. This is step number one. Okay. Actually, we can go even lower. I just want to make sure this is centered. I think so. I think it is. So this is step number one. You can edit the speed graph over here as well if you want to. You can create a hill shape. If you want to receive access to the project file you are working on currently, make sure to check out the pinned comment down below. And now we're going to move on to step number two. So let's just duplicate. There's not going to be any position change at this moment. And now let's move up to step number two. Okay, something like this. Move it out. Take a look at the animation, at the movement. Okay, it could be better because currently it has a little bit of a weird shape, but we can fix that with the speed graph. I'm going to change the position of this arrow thingy now. So let's just create a keyframe, copy current position, copy paste, bam. And we want to bring it up like so. Okay, you can try to align it with the camera sort of keyframes right here. It's going to make it a little bit more on par with what's happening here. We can also adjust the speed graph as well. If you want that, bam, something like this. Let's play this back again. I just love this animation. Okay, and now we've got to add the text. So let's duplicate step number one over here. I'm still gonna leave it as a invisible and blocked layer so that we can do step number three later on. I'm just gonna change the text over here to step number two. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And I can see now that we should bring this a little bit up, something like this. And now let's add glow to the text. In order to add the glow behind this text layer, I'm just going to disable 3D. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to pre-compose the layer right here. I'm going to go to the pre-compose layer with the glow right here. I'm going to copy the Gaussian blur. 
This is the pre-composed layer I was talking about. I'm going to paste it in. Okay. Now I'm just going to pre-compose this with the Gaussian blur in mind, sort of. And I'm just going to transform this into a 3D layer now that it's ready. Bring this a little bit closer, something like this. Let's take a look. Step number one, step number two. Bam. I feel like we could adjust the keyframes here a little bit towards the end. That's just going to give us a little bit of a cleaner finish. I like it. I like it. It's good. That's not the end of this animation, actually. Create a new adjustment layer and search for Lumetri Color. I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette right here. Something like this. And now I mentioned that we're going to do step number three. So where is it? It's going to be a little bit different now because I want to change the style. I don't want it to be, you know, linearly going from the bottom to the top. I want a little bit of a change in terms of the camera positioning. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to straight up duplicate composition one. It's going to show up as composition two. And now we need to make some minor adjustments. So first of all, this little guy, I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to delete those keyframes. And the starting point here is going to be over here. And now we've got to change the camera settings. So same story here. Let's remove these keyframes. Okay. Let's bring this out to the beginning. So basically we're bringing out the last keyframe as the starting point. I also want to get rid of this animation. So I'm just going to bring this out, duplicate it. I know it's weird, but we can leave it like this. This is like the quickest method right now. And then we can move on to changing the perspective. So I want this to be a little bit different. Let's just change the rotation right here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And now we're going to adjust the position of this little guy. Let's move it out to this spot right here. Okay. Minus 400. That looks good. Let's just play this back quickly. Of course, it's linear. We need to fix this. Let's create this sort of ill shape. And we want to add an animation for step number three. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out this video if it seems interesting. And see you in the next one.